threats. We need an investigation. What What is your investigation telling you? Well, I have a better question for you, Steve. Why are you coming to the mic telling the country that it's not terrorism when your own intelligence uh, agencies are telling you it is? And I know they are because I didn't make this up. These are not my words, right? I'm talking to people who are on the inside, some who are on active duty, some who are retired, and everyone literally from critical infrastructure in Department of Homeland Security to the intelligence agencies, they know there's no other, it, it's, there, this is a cyber attack on a critical infrastructure corridor for the United States. This is, you know, for those people who think this is just a river, this is in Baltimore, what does this matter? You don't know anything about what you're talking about. This, the I-94 corridor on the eastern seaboard is literally what connects the north and south. And when I talk about hazardous materials, right, this is a brilliant, well-planned strategic attack on one of the most important supply chains in the United States of America. The only other one is in the western side in California. That's the only one that's busy. And what you have done, you, you now have shut it down. And when I talk about hazardous materials, what are we talking about here? This is refined fuels, right? This is propane gas. This is diesel. This is fuel. This is flammable materials. This is oversized loads, nitrogen, chemicals. Everything that you need for your economy to move has literally just been shut down for four to five years. And, and how did they do it? They knew that they had to target one of two main anchor points on that bridge. There are two load-bearing pylons that any structural engineer can identify that are on the end of each side of the bridge. These are the ones that are thicker and stronger than anything else on that bridge. And when you hit one of those pylons, when you take that out, the reason you see so much of that bridge collapse instantly is you just brought 50% of the span of that bridge coming crumbling down. And what you don't see beneath the surface of the water, Steve, is absolutely catastrophic. It is a structural nightmare and a logistical nightmare because you have the entire bottom part, the concrete part of that bridge, and you don't know the extent of the structural damage to that. And you won't know it until you pull all of that infrastructure out of there and you get to look at it. And so you're talking three to five years at best. And what you're talking about here is probably building a new bridge. So what you have effectively done now, you've shut down the I-95 corridor that's above ground. So now you're going to have to go north to New York. You're going to have to go south to North Carolina and you're and you're. Your trucks, your hazardous materials are going to have to go around Baltimore now. They're not going to be able to go through it. And what else did you do? You shut down the sea corridor, the shipping corridor, because now the port is shut down, right? And so all those tankers that are out at sea that have hazardous materials on them, those are going to have to all be rerouted. And why can you not move hazardous materials through the tunnel? Why is this such a big deal? Because they created that bridge because hazardous materials, for example, oversized loads, they don't fit in the tunnel system. Yep. And there's other um, loads that are yep. so dangerous that you, they require, A, they require a permit. It takes time to get a permit. It costs money to get a permit. It requires an escort, right? You've seen it on the highway sometimes. You've seen when they, you have these massive oversized loads and they've got escorts all around them, these huge convoys. Well, what do you do on one of the busiest corridors in the United States? You don't shut it down in the day so this can happen. That means you can only move this stuff at night, um, which automatically impacts the amount of traffic that you can use, the tunnel is going to be overloaded. This is what you call death by a thousand cuts. It is an absolutely catastrophic you, you, attack on critical infrastructure, and you cannot see it because a cyber attack is unseen, just like the attack on 2020 on the voting okay. machine that you cannot see. Okay, I want to go. You just had this big thing with the FBI talking about the, what the Chinese Communist Party's uh, cyber hacking unit that they've been monitoring mm -hmm. for 10 years, and now they're saying it's out of control. Are your sources telling you 
that they they feel that there's enough information out there that it is a cyber attack and is it a state actor or non-state actors? 100%, yes. Um, they are saying that this is a cyber attack. You didn't have a terrorist group board the ship and commandeer it and take it over. You had somebody take hack into the systems on board the ship, the GPS system, and reroute that ship. They did it in the middle of the night because they didn't want the crew to be awake. They didn't want everybody to be on full high alert. They wanted everybody to be asleep and you trying to wake people up and rouse people because when, when I spoke to one individual who knows, who has, let's just say he worked in Baltimore for many, many years and was there when that bridge was opened. He knew when he looked at the security camera vid video of the harbor, the long version, the seven minutes, he knew from the start of that video when he looked at that ship that it was not in the channel. You need to be in the channel to make that turn, to have any chance of making that turn. So now you're traveling. That is a river that, that flows pretty quickly, Steve, even under normal circumstances, right? And at a certain point, you're committed. That ship is heavy. The load is heavy. The, the water flowing at a certain speed, you've got very little room to maneuver. So at a certain point, there was absolutely nothing that they could do to stop that ship from the course that it was on because they were not in control of it. And they had all of these other factors coming into play. So when, when terrorism and counterterrorism experts look at this, when people who know uh, critical infrastructure, um, when, you know, there's a number of different people that I've spoken to, cyber people, when they look at it, they know exactly what they're looking at. And so it's extraordinary that anybody could come out now when they haven't had time to do an investigation, when they, I know for a fact that they're getting people inside their agencies that are telling them what they're telling me. And they're making public statements that completely contradict what anybody who knows this this terrain, who knows it, and I don't just mean the physical terrain, I mean the cyber terrain and uh, and the terrorism terrain and the you know and the critical infrastructure terrain and all of that. I mean, I've talked to people whose job after 9/11 was to identify if you were Al Qaeda and you wanted to capitalize on that attack, how would you do it? They were the people that came up with the, the term death by a thousand cuts. And what you're looking at now is exactly what they feared terrorist groups would do to, to really exploit the advantage that they had after 9-11. Because you are bringing the United States to its knees step by step from within. Laura, how can people uh, follow you on this? We'd love to have you back on the next couple of days. How do people, social media, podcast, all of your information, your writing, where do people go? You can find me on X. I'm putting most of this information um, out on X. And I, I, I want, you know, I really want to emphasize, Steve, strongly, we are in an undeclared war right now. And these are not my words. I'm not making this up. This is coming from people who um, who really know and who ordinarily would never ever talk to me, but we've reached a point in this city. I think you know if you if you look at the quote of one of the um, one of the intelligence um, uh, analysts that I spoke to, right? I, I'm just going to read it to you very very briefly, okay? It's not long and it really sums it up. He said they have figured out how to bring us down. As long as you stay away from the teeth of the U.S. military, you can pick the U.S. apart. We are arrogant and ignorant, a lethal combination. Obama said they would fundamentally change America, and they did. We are in a free fall ride on a roller coaster right now. No brakes, just picking up speed. And I would urge people, watch very carefully the people that tell you that this attack doesn't matter. Stop following them on Twitter. Discount everything they say because they're either totally ignorant and useless or they are plant, a plant. And there's a lot of Anons out there, right? And I follow a lot of Anons. And I appreciate and respect the work that they're doing. But we're in a moment of truth now. We have very, very little time. When you start to shut down, you know, hazardous materials and the, and the shipment of fuel, you know what that means. 
It means everything goes up. It means food goes down. You know, the, the access to food and critical infrastructure, that means that goes down. Prices go up. This is catastrophic for the American people, and it's catastrophic for this country. But it is a financial and economic attack. If you're not going to see tanks rolling down the street, stop looking at the type of, you know, conventional war and saying to yourself, well, if I don't see this, then it means we're okay. You, I mean, if people need to understand what they're looking at. And, and for those people who say, well, you know, the FBI, isn't it interesting? Christopher Ray just put this big counterterrorism guy, you know, he put him in charge of the FBI office of Baltimore just yesterday. And this is the guy that's out in front of the cameras already. Well, isn't that amazing, right? Do you believe in coincidences? I don't. I don't believe in coincidences anymore. None of this happens by chance. This happens by design. And the problem that we have is that people in power in this country are complicit in the breakdown of American infrastructure and America's defenses. And Steve, this is one thing that's really important for people to understand. If you step back from this for one single moment, you will notice a pattern developing here. When we left behind $80 billion of equipment in Afghanistan, nobody said we had to do that. There was no one with a gun to the administration's head saying, get out of Afghanistan by this date. They said, oh, we made a deal with the Taliban. Oh, wait a minute. You made a deal with a bunch of terrorists? You're the world's superpower. You chose a timeline and you chose an exit that resulted in handing $80 billion of advanced military equipment to your enemies. Well, what did that do? It reduced the advantage that America had on the battlefield because you narrowed the gap by giving them technology that spent years, cost the taxpayers hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars uh, to develop. You gave that to your enemies. What did the Taliban do? They gave it to Russia. They gave it to China. They gave it to Iran. They gave it to whoever they needed to do to reverse engineer it and figure out how to use it. Then what do you have? Years later, remember when um, under Obama, when the drone went down, there was a stealth drone that went down over Iran and the Obama administration chose not to recover it. Well, I know people who were on a team of American intelligence operatives doing other work. They were on the ground in Iran. They were literally within less than an hour away from that drone. They had it within arm's reach. They could have gone and recovered it. And they were told to stand down. The Obama administration left that stealth technology in the hands of the Iranians. Fast forward years later, what do you have happening in Iraq? Oh, you have an attack on a U.S. base where a number of U.S. soldiers die and it's not detected on the radar? Oh, yeah, because you were using a stealth drone that you reverse engineered. So this has been going on for a very, very long time now. It started under Obama. It was interrupted by Trump and it was continued under the Biden administration. I, I know somebody else who was in USASOC who was horrified when he was seconded to the State Department to find that we had turned off satellite monitoring systems that were our counter nuclear pr proliferation technology. The guy running that program in the State Department was playing cards on his computer and he was ordered to stand down by his superior officers. There's, there's not a direction that you can look in, Steve where we have our leaders, people in power, have been systematically dismantling the defenses of the United States of America. And this attack is a wake-up call. Open your eyes and realize what you are facing, because they cannot afford for this election to take place. They cannot afford for Donald Trump to come into power. And there is absolutely nothing they will do there was nothing, they will stop at nothing to prevent that from happening. And Donald Trump is just a life raft. This is not about one man. You can't gamble everything on one man and think he's got the power to fix it all. This is so much bigger than just Donald Trump, but he's a life raft. And without that life raft, you have no chance.